After several award nominations, 2 million sales, and a few patches, we think it's time to put together a comprehensive list of everything you need to know about your favorite Tough Cup pals. What's up everyone, I'm Jacob with the Leaderboard, and today we're bringing you 107 facts about Cuphead. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad. <laughs> Cuphead was created by two brothers, Jared and Chad Moldenhauer. They both grew up in Saskatchewan, Canada, where they played games and envisioned making their own from the time that they were children. The brothers explained that they had been interested in making video games since the ages of 13 and 14. It was then that they began analyzing the games that they played, critiquing gameplay and graphics to understand why some individual elements worked and others didn't. The brothers were incredibly obsessed with 1930s cartoons. In fact, they liked 30s cartoons more than contemporary cartoons. When they saw graphics evolving in video games, both Chad and Jared thought that traditional animation would be incorporated into gameplay. But outside of Mickey's Mania and early entries like Dragon's Lair, there weren't actually that many attempts. So they took it upon themselves to add to the collection. When the brothers got older, they decided to develop a game of their own that incorporated a timeless animation style. Lucky for them, in the early 2000s, Microsoft had an indie program for the original Xbox. The brothers and a close friend built a PC to the exact specs used by developers and started trying to make a few prototypes of their own. Some years passed before Chad and Jared returned to the game. Chad moved to Ontario to work in graphic design while Jared worked for the family business as a construction worker. In 2010, Super Meat Boy became one of the first major indie success stories. It was developed by a small team led by a pair of developers, Edmund McMillan and Tommy Rufenis. Their story resonated with Chad and Jared and part-time Cuphead development started in late 2012. The concept for Cuphead came about when the brothers developed a couple of levels in children's art styles. In fact, the game was initially supposed to begin with worlds made of crude scribbles and shapes and become more developed in later levels similar to how a child advances in school. While messing around with the concept, the brothers replaced some of their art with stills from Disney films as a joke. When Chad and Jared presented the idea to their friends, the response was overwhelming. They loved the game's art style. Then Chad says he started crying, because he knew that the task ahead would be quite daunting. For the next year, Chad studied the critically acclaimed book The Animator's Survival Kit written by Richard Williams, the animation director for Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It became a rule book of sorts for Cuphead's animation process. That same year, Jared and Chad founded Studio MDHR, an independent video video game company that would grow to be a big name in the industry. For those of you who don't know, MDHR is short for Moldenhauer. Initially, the brothers were shooting for a 2014 release with plans to produce a very small game with only eight bosses. The three-person team also grew once development progressed. Members of Studio MDHR are from all over the United States and Canada. Among others, some of the team's members included close personal friends and family of the Moldenhauer brothers. The actual character Cuphead was inspired by two cartoons, The China Shop and Picnic Panic. His design also took some cues from a World War II Japanese propaganda film called Evil Mickey Attacks Japan, which was released in 1936. It features a giant cup head that turns into a tank, which is incredibly clever if you think of those plane supers. The China Shop and Picnic Panic led Chad and Jared to an aha moment. They decided to adopt a similar style for their game. They drew a couple versions and right away, the cup stuck. Cuphead and Mugman also drew inspiration from Bimbo, a cute cartoon dog from Fleischer Studios. Mugman is based on very early versions of Bimbo's character design. The Devil's design is based on the Devil from Hell's Bells, a Silly Symphonies short. The Devil's transformation into a spider was borrowed from the same film. The Moldenhauers came up with over 150 different character designs while working on Cuphead. Some of the most discussed creations were a plate and fork head character and a kappa, an amphibian looking guy from Japanese folklore with a top hat. A regular game involving 3D models only requires each character to be designed once, then rendered via computer software. Cuphead, though, needed characters to be drawn at 24 frames per second, which means that a typical boss could have anywhere from 13 to 1,500 frames of animation. Every single frame of animation was drawn by an artist on paper and inked by hand. The rest was then scanned and digitally colored to expedite the animation process. The brothers didn't initially plan for the game to be hand-drawn. While digital drawings did speed up the creative process, it wasn't too pleasing to the eye. Once the team tested out the pencil and paper method, it became the standard practice. All of the drawings were colored digitally. There was a test in which the team compared digital paintings with hand-painted gouache drawings, gouache being a sort of opaque watercolor paint. Luckily, there was no real difference, which allowed them to shave off a ton of production time. Chad and Jared were very devoted to the 24 frames per second rule. They felt that the frame rate adds to the fantasy of movies. As film approach higher frame rates, they look closer to real life, thus taking away some of that movie magic. While the animation is all 24 frames per second, the gameplay is 60 frames per second. The Cuphead team felt that a 2D game has to be 60 FPS to play perfectly. On top of the hand-drawn animation, Cuphead's backgrounds consist of layers of watercolor paintings and physical models. Much of the design for the game was handled 
with the utmost care and commitment to maintaining a consistent style. The Moldenhauer brothers wanted to create Cuphead as an ode to a dying art. Despite many suggestions to make the game 3D, they tried to show that in the grand scheme of things, a 3D game wasn't inherently better than a 2D game. The working title for this game was Turbo Super Mega. This title was meant to be a reference to the over-the-top style of 90s games, Mega Man being a perfect example. In fact, the original setup for the game was very much like Mega Man. Players would be able to select a boss, and once they'd trounce them, they could move on to the next. The first YouTube trailer for Cuphead premiered in 2014, and it was followed by an extremely successful presentation at E3 2015. At the time, it was introduced as an eight-boss rush. However, after the warm reception at E3, the brothers decided to go all in. They remortgaged their homes and went back to their initial scope for the game. When the concept gained attention online, the company got support from Microsoft, which helped them achieve a more fleshed out and polished product from what they originally planned. The team had to create an efficient pipeline for the pencils, inks, final colored frames, scanned watercolored paintings, and every step of the process. These pieces were then compiled in layers to bring the entire project to life. Maya Moldenhauer, the lead inking artist and producer of Cuphead, mentioned that there were many days where she had to sleep with a wrist brace. Cartoonists and animators would be familiar with the brace. It's for stress injuries from inking every single frame of animation in the game for countless hours a day. In the last four or five months of development, Jared's personal record for numbers of hours worked in a row reached 34, which sounds pretty brutal. The music for Cuphead was composed by Christopher Madigan, a professional jazz and theater musician based in Toronto, Canada. The soundtrack features nearly three hours of original jazz, early big band, and ragtime music. Each song is also played by live musicians, including a 13-piece big band, 10-piece ragtime ensemble, a solo pianist, a vocalist, a tap dancer, and a few other grand surprises. There are multiple mixes with different solos in each of the tracks. When a player goes back to the same boss, they can hear one instrument playing louder than all of the others, so each song is different from the last. As you might already know, Cuphead draws inspiration from many 1930s artists, but mainly from old Disney and Fleischer films. Fleischer Studios is most famous for characters like Betty Boop and Popeye the Sailor. Chad Moldenhauer has even described Fleischer's work as the magnetic north for the game's art style. Jared and Chad cite four cartoons as major touchstones for the game. Swing You Sinners from 1930, Bimbo's Initiation from 1931, Minnie the Moocher from 1932, and Cobweb Hotel from 1936. All four were created by Fleischer Studios. Fleischer Studios also share some similarities with Studio MDHR. It was created by Max and Dave Fleischer, a pair of brothers with a unique vision. Jared and Chad also took particular inspiration from Disney's Silly Symphony series. For instance, many have suggested that the 1934 cartoon Funny Little Bunnies shares a lot of the same artistic elements as Cuphead. The brothers wanted to make a game that extremely differed from the Save the Princess storylines of most 2D side-scrollers. They embraced a darker theme, one that involved the devil and gambling. Cuphead has a mix of linear and non-linear gameplay. While the levels are very linear, as is the nature of 2D side-scrollers, gamers can try levels in the overworld in whatever order they choose, with more levels opening up as the player completes an island. The game is 75% bosses and 25% platformer. There are technically 19 bosses in Cuphead, though King Dice provides an additional eight mini-bosses. There are six types of guns in Cuphead. The Pea Shooter, the Spread Shot, the Chaser, the Lobber, the Charge, and the Roundabout. All weapons have a regular fire and an EX attack, which can be used in exchange for one card from the Super Meter. There are also three types of super abilities in the game that can only be activated once the player has filled their Super Meter with five cards by parrying objects or damaging enemies. They're required after finishing the mausoleum levels and do the most damage during a boss fight. As many people have noted, Cuphead is ridiculously hard, like the games of the 80s and 90s. The developers wanted players to experience the old feeling of accomplishment that was a big part of those unforgiving platformers. Cuphead was developed on the Unity engine. This is the same engine used for games like Monument Valley, Ori and the Blind Forest, Oddworld New and Tasty, and many, many others. In regards to gameplay, Cuphead draws inspiration from many other side-scroller games. Some of the biggest influences include Gunstar Heroes, Contra 3, Street Fighter 3, Super Mario World, and the Thunder Force series. The brothers have also cited Mega Man as a significant influence on the game's mechanics, especially for one of the most notorious bosses, the dragon, Grim Matchstick. In fact, Grim Matchstick is meant to be a direct reference to the dragon boss at the beginning of Mega Man 2. The original idea for the dragon was to have him in a musical setting and shooting notes out instead of fire, though they couldn't quite justify this decision in the story, so they just stuck to fireballs instead. In this boss fight, there's a three-foot-tall painted styrofoam model in the background. 180 pictures were taken to capture the whole scope of the building. This practical effect provided another layer of vintage goodness to the gameplay. In the dragon's boss fight, the studio also incorporated a thunderstorm for the third phase of gameplay. For this scene, they drew inspiration from Disney's Old Mill for rain and the lightning effects from the Mickey Mouse short, The Mad Doctor. While it took a while for the team to figure out how to incorporate lightning into the gameplay, the solution was simply to change the entire background when matchstick 
plastic took on his new form. As a result, a totally new background had to be painted and layered with the styrofoam tower. The Frog Brothers, Ribby and Croaks, are clear references to Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter. Ribby even uses a Kamehame Hadouken attack. Not only that, but when they combine into a slot machine, the three tigers serve as a reference to Sagat's tiger uppercut, the three bisons are a shout out to M. Bison, and the three snakes are a reference to Vega's snake tattoo. This is no coincidence, both Chad and Jared wanted levels to allude to old fighting games. The NPCs in the background cheering are also a shout out to games like Street Fighter and King of Fighters, and the frog's death quote in their final phase references one of the battle announcer's quotes from Street Fighter Alpha 3. Die House contains the line, I never play nice, I'm the devil's right hand man, which sounds very reminiscent of I'm a gambling boogeyman although I don't play fair from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Both songs are references to the music of Cab Calloway, who inspired the character of King Dice. The shopkeeper Porkrind is a reference to the purple smoking pirate pig from Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. He also sells various liquors, like the dragon bartender from Wonder Boy in Monsterland. Hilda's constellation forms are based on Neumann Cascade's virtual simulator boss fight in Contra Hardcore, even taking on the exact same constellations, from a Taurus to a Sagittarius. She also turns into a mechanical crescent moon that looks similar to the early boss from Capcom's Chariot Shooter. Fans have noticed that Rumor Honeybottoms resembles Queen Sectoria from Kirby Triple Deluxe. I mean, they're both giant magic using queen bees with a staff as their main weapon who transform into something completely different for their third phase, but the Moldenhauer brothers let us know that while it is a cool rumor that all of this was intentional, it's like the one thing that wasn't actually intentional. Another reference to a classic shooter is Cala Maria, a giant mermaid who resembles the second boss of Fantastic Journey. She even had a pirate ship on her head in early concepts, but the design was scrapped due to how difficult it would be to animate. Cala Maria is definitely the character with the most shoutouts. Her design was influenced by classic characters like Betty Boop, Olive Oil, Splash Woman from Mega Man 9, and even Wonder Woman. According to a Twitter post by animator Tina Navretsky, the Baroness's design was mainly inspired by Letty Linton, B.B. Daniels, Betty Grable, Loretta Young, and other starlets from the 1930s. In one of Cagney Carnation's final forms, he attacks by spitting out pollen that floats across the screen. Cuphead's latest patch had one new bit of content that said, touch fuzzy, get a little dizzy. Now when you touch fuzzies, the screen gets a little blurry and suffers from a rainbow effect, like the infamous drug marshmallows in Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Many fans called Dr. Call Dr. Robotnik and the gem he uses to make his crystal attack pattern the Chaos Emerald. Fans, of course, can't help but relate Dr. Call to the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Because, I mean, look at them. And because so many of you have brought it up, yes, the robot's design shares similarities to the Iron Giant, Bender from Futurama, and also the title machines from the Superman short, The Mechanical Monsters. And while we're on the subject of this boss, Dr. Call's level theme is a remixed version of the E3 2014 trailers theme. The King Dice's boss run was heavily influenced by Gunstar Heroes, which had a similar gimmick in Black Stage. In the background of the garden level, where the player has to fight the potato and carrot bosses, there's a bag that says Acme Grow. This is a reference to classic Warner Brothers cartoons, which would often contain fictional Acme products. The achievement for defeating the devil is called Swing You Sinners, a shout out to the 1930 cartoon of the same name that served as a major source of inspiration for the game. Also, the quote for the devil's final death screen is a possible reference to M. Bison's victory screen from the console version of Street Fighter 2. Goopy Legrand also takes his light blue color and pointed tip from the famous slimes of Dragon Quest. And there's probably many more references we've missed, so leave a comment and tell us your favorite one. Alright, onward. The term wallop, which was used to introduce most of the bosses is an early 20th century colloquialism for beer. Wallop references beer's alcohol content. The Moldenhauer brothers adopted the term though because of its old-timey boxing announcer vibes. On the official soundtrack, the tracks Hurry Up, Coin Op Bop, High Score, and The Airship are never heard in-game. According to Chris Madigan, many of these songs belong to levels that didn't make the cut. Cuphead's overworld design has changed a lot since 2013. It's had many iterations before landing on its final style. Additionally, an alternate opening theme can be found in the game's files, which reveals that the original plot of the game was fighting in a tournament rather than collecting souls. The airship was played once before. Some early demo footage shows a jellyfish-like boss with a pink orb on its head likely to teach the player about parrying. A debug menu in the final game reveals a lot of unused content. For example, there were a few bosses cut from the King's Court, a card boss that's a match three game, a light boss that involves dodging rotating lasers, and a pachinko boss farther along than the others that involves dodging falling pachinko balls. It takes most players at least an hour to beat most levels, but some gamers have beaten the whole 
game in less than 30 minutes. The current fastest speedrun is under 25 minutes solo without loading screens on regular and without rage quits. At the end of the game, players have a choice of whether to fight the devil or become his possessions. If the player decides to not fight, they're given a bad ending where Cuphead and Mugman become the devil's lackeys and the option to play again. If you fight the devil and win, you get the good ending where Cuphead and Mugman escape. Those who beat the game unlock an expert mode that has faster and layered attacks, among other things. You know, in case the game wasn't hard enough the first time. It's impossible. Not actually, but I'm very frustrated! Now, on to the tips and tricks. If you go talk to the turtle on Inkwell Isle 3, he alludes to seeing the game in shades of grey, one that only a pacifist platformer would be able to perceive. If you get a P ranking for all of the run and gun levels achieved by not firing a shot during the level, you can unlock the black and white filter and vintage audio which can be turned on in the display menu. There's also a two-strip filter available for those who can average an A on most of the game's bosses. Just talk to the fork in Inkwell Isle 3 and he'll reward you for your good grades. Short on coins? Don't sweat it, there are coins hidden all over the world map. After defeating all of the bosses in Inkwell Isle 1, examine the trees to the left of Axe Boy to receive your first hidden coin. On Inkwell Isle 2, after you discover the hidden path behind the aviary action area, you can receive a coin from the Candy Girl for finding a faster way across the island. The juggler near Fiery Frolic provides you with a coin if you can parry four times in a row. This move is easy to achieve during the boss fight with King Dice or on the pink balloons in Funfair Fever. While you're on Inkwell Isle 2, you can find the fourth member of the quartet behind Baroness Von Bonbon's Sugarland Shimmy. You can only do this if you've defeated the boss, though. Although you don't get a coin for your efforts, you can be treated to a song. On Inkwell Isle 3, there's a coin behind the shack that's near the shop. Also, in the same world, if you speak back and forth between the gramophone and the jukebox, you unlock a piano score for all world map themes. In the fourth world, to the left of the casino, there's one last hidden coin in the corner of the dice walls. Once you've collected all of your coins, you obtain the high roller achievement, and you can buy that upgrade that you've worked so hard for. While we haven't provided all of the hidden coin hiding places in this 107, don't forget to retrieve more coins from fellow NPCs. Most of the minor characters have an objective, and each world has its own secret route. Become the Cuphead Master and finish the game to 200% completion. While Cuphead is an ingenious game, there have been some past bugs that have garnered a mixture of laughter and tears. After the game's release, there was a bug in the Windows 10 version that would accidentally delete a player's progress if they pressed Alt-Tab during the game. If the game wasn't already driving the person crazy, this definitely would. There were a few other famous glitches as well, including the Mugman Army glitch and the Rapid Weapon Swap glitch. The Mugman glitch would occur when Player 2 dropped out of a game only to rejoin as Mugman. Rather than getting rid of the initial Mugman, a player could add as many as they wanted to the screen. The other glitch, known as the Rapid Weapon Swap, allowed players to switch weapons extremely fast while shooting. This allowed gamers to basically shoot both weapons at the same time, killing the bosses super fast. This glitch is also known as the only way I was actually able to beat the game glitch. I've tried it since it was patched and now I suck again. The patch that eventually fixed these glitches added a spooky mausoleum announcer, as well as displaying Dr. Call's robot death progress in phase one. Despite the childish-like appearance of the art, the game is rated E 10 and up for the alcohol and tobacco references, and some mild cartoon violence. But the game revolves around a deal with the devil, so that's probably not a huge surprise. Cuphead was released on September 29th, 2017, after four years of development for a very reasonable 1999. The game was exclusively released on Xbox One and PC. However, despite the fact that it's only a available on Windows, the brothers have talked about looking into Mac and Linux ports. Cuphead went platinum in just under two weeks, selling over one million copies in the digital market. And as of recording this video, the game has since gone double platinum, having sold over two million copies. The game also released an epic vinyl of the soundtrack. It contains over three hours of music with album art by Django Snow and is sold in old-timey packaging. Reddit user, I'm probably gonna get this pronunciation wrong, Zhu Beta, real name John Sellers, an epic fan of Cuphead, built his own retro arcade cabinet. It only took him two weeks and $700 to create, and he didn't have to pay with his soul. At least, we don't think he did. Cuphead was recognized by the International Animated Film Society, ASIFA Hollywood, for career achievement and exceptional contributions to animation at the 45th Annie Awards with the Special Achievement Award. The game also won for Best Visual Design and Xbox Game of the Year at the 35th Golden Joystick Awards. And for Best Art Direction, Best Independent Game, and Best Debut Indie Game at the Game Awards in 2017. Also, this doesn't mark the end for Cuphead. Jared Moldenhauer has said that he guarantees that fans will see more Cuphead at some point in the future, which means that his adventures with Mugman are far from over. What's better is that Studio MDHR plans on making more 2D games in the future using traditional techniques. Jared noted that it would be weird to make the switch to 3D games with such a brilliant group of artists. And to answer one final question, what's in those cups? The creators have an answer. It's the essence of Cuphead and Mugman's souls. Once again, I'm Jacob, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Cuphead.
Cuphead. Who's your favorite boss? How many times have you died against Grim Matchstick? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.